especially Sunajana. And uh, so uh, I'm talking about uh, understanding large-scale inhomogeneous turbulence from a kinetic theory perspective. Actually, this idea has been um, formed uh, more than 10 years ago. And uh, with my uh, collaborators, uh, Steve Ozag, Ilya Starosowski, and Victor, and uh, I think the idea is pretty interesting, uh, even though we have not made much of uh, progress in the last 10 years, but uh, still a few new results. So first, let me to give some introduction about uh, why we are so much into, uh, uh, into the large scale inhomogeneous turbulence problem and uh, why we need to go beyond the Navier-Stokes-based closed um, formulation. And I'll give a summer review of the kinetic theory basics. And then, uh, especially about kinetic theory that pertains to finite Knudsen number. And then talk about some formula formulism that, uh, that is applicable to finite uh, uh, Nusen number uh, without the perturbation expansion, and that gives some further insight about the fluid properties in finite Nusen. And then at the, the core of my talk, talk is um, how that is re relevant for think, understanding homogeneous turbulence. And uh, I'll give some arguments and uh, some results. And then I'll conclude uh, my presentation. So um, I have worked in industry for a long time. So our uh, most important thing is to, to address real world engineering problems. And uh, so this is one of the examples that we collaborated with uh, uh, development of the Tesla Model S. And uh, there, as you know, there are many uh, electric cars now is uh, coming in the market, and uh, they don't really have much of the wind tunnel, the traditional ways to to de design and uh, and and develop uh, cars. So they they rely on much more on simulation tools. So so they, the uh, the top picture is the one they initially came up with the design model, and uh, and then. They solely based on simulation, and uh, eventually the, the the model that came to the market is the one in the uh, lower picture, and has the the drag value, which is the twenty five percent lower, which is one of the lowest drag cars in the in the world, and uh, and that's very important to speak about the. Simulation of turbulence because this the flow around it is turbulent, and uh, this is another project we did with Porsche. This is a, is more of a not an aerodynamics, but this aerodynamic around the car, but uh, it's more of the the airflow that goes into the air intake and then penetrate into behind and uh, try to air cool the the brakes. Because this car is highly performing, so the brake, when you hit on it, it has a high temperature. The, these trace particles are colored by temperature. And uh, I mean, this is a colorful picture, but, but uh, it is actually a very, a lot of quantitative analysis with it. Um, this is uh, uh, something we did with, uh, um, I think, a Jaguar. And that, you see the, the pressure fluctuation with or without the wiper. And actually, this actually has a sound. Unfortunately, I cannot play the sound here. So another interesting project is a NASA ERA. And this is a, one of the airplane designs they, they are working on that uh, boasts of uh, the most quiet noise. 
And uh, the two design concepts, the, the baseline and the, and the modified. You see the pressure fluctuation from the flaps going through the gap. And uh, the, the modified one has much lower fluctuation, just showing in the movie. And also, they put various brackets to reduce the, the sound. And uh, unfortunately, I can play the sound later. I cannot show the, the true geometry because it's confidential, but uh, it's covered by another irrelevant picture. But this actually has a sound. You can actually, the, you know, when you do the simulation, you generate the frequency. Then you can actually play on the loudspeaker and see how that sounds like, like what you actually hear from the, the, uh, the real, real situation. So what we are talking about, um, airflow is fully described by Navier-Stokes equation. There's no, no argument here. And uh, however, due to the limitation of many things, so we are only able to simulate large scale part or the average part of the, of the, the flow. So we mostly, I mean, actually, we are always dealing with uh, the Reynolds average, the form of the Navier-Stokes. So when you take the average, everybody knows because of nonlinearity, you get an additional term. That term is called Reynolds stress. And it's defined in such a way that uh, it is actually the second order fluctuation velocity, and uh, which is measured from the mean. So, so in order to have a, a close form of this equation, you need to express that Reynolds stress in terms of mean quantities. And um, for a long time, over 100 years ago, that uh, Reynolds stress has been approximated by the Busnesk approximation, and which says that the Reynolds stress is proportional to the mean rate of strain with a scalar uh, uh, constant. I mean, scalar coefficient in front. And uh, why this is con conjectured in this way is because it, it uh, assumes that the, the eddies, the small eddies act like molecules. They interact and they, they do many things so that as a result of the, the effective macroscopic effect is, is that of eddy viscosity times the, 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 the gradient of velocity. And uh, a vis eddy viscosity you can also ana analyze uh, and uh, it is scaled by some representative length scale and time scales. And, uh, when you do this quick analysis, or it doesn't have to be specific, you will find this effective interaction length scale. And over the, the large scale uh, representative length, length scale, then this shows the ratio of these two lenses is in the order one range, which makes the question this assumption is valid. I'll talk a little further about it. So now, an airflow can also be described, as we know, by kinetic equation, Boltzmann equation. And uh, so see how that can connect it back to the Navier-Stokes. So when you look at the Boltzmann equation, and uh, the right-hand side representing is representing a collision process. And uh, no matter how detailed the collision process might be, but it must satisfy the fundamental conservation laws. And so you, when you take the velocity moments of this, uh, the right-hand side, because of no net increase or decrease of mass momentum and energy, the right-hand side vanishes. So you get this formally without an approximation, a, a continuity equation. And I write once again the continuity equation. And uh, one, the first moment, because that's a general form, but when you take a specific moment, the first one is nothing but the mass con continuity equation. And uh, the velocity is 
in the continuity equation represent the fluid velocity is nothing but average of the microscopic or the particle velocities. And uh, when you take the velocity moment, uh, then you get the, the known continuity equation for the momentum. But then you're left with a, a momentum flux tensor, which is represented by the pi, which is similar in a similar form as the, the velocity deviation from the mean and the, the second order average of that. And this, I want to point out this moment, momentum stress tensor is fully determined when you solve the Boltzmann equation. There's nothing unknown about it. The only thing unknown in the, is, is at the macroscopic level, this pi needs to be uh, closed in order for a closed macroscopic representation. Now, let's also review a little bit about the collision process. A collision process has a, a basic property that due to the Boltzmann H theorem, it drives the distribution function, whatever kind, towards a more uniform, universal equilibrium distribution function with some sort of effective time scale, which relaxes the, the function to equilibrium. And the equilibrium form has a specific, the equilibrium distribution has a specific Gaussian form, which is, with this particular form, is called the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. That is a result of the detailed balance of the collision. And uh, also, one interesting thing is it is fully determined by the conserved fluid properties, such as density, temperature, and uh, fluid velocity. So when you have the three conserved quantity associated with the conservation laws, then this equilibrium distribution is fully determined. And anything that it measures the full distribution and the, and the, the difference to the equilibrium is, is a measure of this deviation from that, such an equilibrium. And that, I uh, will discuss, is related to the, the Knudsen number. And uh, if in a, con a condition such that the microscopic interaction length scale, or the usually we, we know as the mean free pass, divided by the characteristic or the typical fluid flow in homogeneous length scale, is a small quantity, then we can introduce a small value on the right hand side representing the collision process is a much faster uh, process. Then we can do a standard uh, perturbation analysis by expanding F around the equilibrium by a small deviation from equilibrium F1 or some sort of a higher order deviation. And that is described systematically by the so-called chapman Escock expansion. In this expansion, you can relate the higher order deviation to the lower one via a hierarchy of relations so that in the end, the, the nth order deviation from equilibrium is all the way related to the equilibrium distribution function as a high order time and spatial derivatives in this way. And uh, now, look back to the momentum stress tensor, and then the average of the stress tensor can be expressed into average based on the, the equilibrium distribution function or the deviation from the equilibrium distribution function in many terms. And uh, the average is defined, average over n is, means is that quantity averaged over the f of n. And uh, once again, we have this hierarchical relationship. And then you can have these guys all expressible 
consecutively into the average with the equivalent distribution function as the probability weight, and in this way. So it's a nth, uh, nth second order moment involves the equilibrium moments up to n plus two. Okay, now let's look at uh, some specific examples. If you assume the distribution function is equilibrium, then this second moment gives rise to just a delta function with a proportion, proportionality scalar at, known as a pressure. And, uh, but if you are interested in some deviation from such a fully full equilibrium distribution function, but the deviation is small, then you find a correction to that in this form. This is nothing but the Navier-Stokes, the right-hand side. And this form is the, the typical Newtonian form because the, the, the stress is proportional to the rate of strain with the proportionality coefficient as the viscosity. Now, if you are not happy with this, you can do a little bit further to look at the second order correction to this Navier-Stokes. You find that there is a, a well-defined form. It's, it's just related to so-called the, the Bonetti effect, that this, the, the second order deviation from equilibrium is a time, a total time derivative of the rate of mean rate of, I mean the rate of strain, plus all these uh, tensorial kind of a combination where S is the rate of strain and omega is the 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 uh, anti-symmetric uh, combination of velocity gradient, the the uh, vorticity tensor, and uh, so later I will come back. This term represents the memory effect, and these terms are responsible for secondary flows. And uh, interestingly enough, for, for kinetic theory, if we are using, say, uh, BGK approximation, the, um, then if the collision relaxation time, uh, its variation can be ignored, you actually, you can, you can write the, the solution of the Boltzmann equation without expansion. So you will find that the solution of the full distribution function is related to a pass integral through the pass of the equilibrium distribution function. It, it means that the, the full distribution function, if if you have a, the relaxation time is, is zero, then immediately assume a full uh, equivalent distribution function. But if the tau is not zero, but finite, it actually is a integration over the path of the equivalent distribution function with a decaying factor. And uh, so this means the, the if the spatial variation or time variation scale is uh, small or even as small as, as a comparable to tau, then you are more deviated from, from equilibrium. And uh, another interesting thing is that equation actually have an exact closed form uh, solution in the macroscopic way. Usually a microscopic, you, you cannot, you very rare to find an exact closed form from the microscopic representation to, to macroscopic representation. But in a special flow situation, in a unidirectional flow for any finite Nusen number, you can actually find a closed form equation for, the, for that Boltzmann equation. Oops. Yes. And uh, once again, if, uh, if the mean free pass lambda is a mean free pass and is zero or the collision time is zero, that 
the, the whole integral over the exponential form actually become unity. So you reduce to the, the well-known diffusion equation that governs the, the flow of channel flow and the quiet flow and any flow is, is nothing but just this. And, uh, but if you do a little bit of analysis, say, okay, I look at a small deviation from the, say, small lambda, then you find that this top one reduced to a telegraph equation, and that actually you can take two limits. If one limit is tau equals zero, that gives rise to the standard diffusion equation, but if you, if you think this term is, a, is actually more important than this first, or first time derivative, then it become like a wave equation. And uh, it has a very interesting dis dispersion uh, property and also interesting diffusion property that in the short time, it goes like a ballistic and uh, the long time is a diffusive. And, uh, and this actually, this whole, equ this equation can be solved for any time. So, so you actually, you find that the, 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 diff the, the, it, like the, the random walk-like process is exactly, uh, has the same solution as the Langevin equation. And uh, now look at the, that equation for our familiar uh, channel or quad flow situations. And uh, the solution, I, before I show the solution, I want to talk about the, first of all, the, the, the solution actually re, reduced to the, the known Navier-Stokes solution at a nuisance number goes to zero, but, all, but when at a finite nuisance number, actually the solution uh, uh, results in some finite slip velocity <laughs> on the wall. And the, when you look at the, the momentum flux tensor, it has this form compared to our familiar momentum, uh, momentum flux in the, in the usual Navier-Stokes in the unidirectional flow is just a viscosity times the gradient of velocity. And uh, for this form, for quiet flow, because the, the momentum flux at any, any location is, is the same for steady state quiet flow, that corresponds to du dy is a constant. But this one actually shows, even for, for momentum flux is a constant across different uh, location in the quiet flow, it does not result in a, a constant velocity uh, gradient. And these are the analytical, exact analytical solution that uh, a quiet flow is uh, constrained in a location of plate at minus one and plus one, and a velocity at minus one, and uh, at this location, velocity is plus one. So the dashed line is the usual quiet solution, which is very trivial. Um, and, but when you, I mean, actually, that dashed line is a, is a small news number, almost like a quiet flow. But uh, when you gradually look at a higher news number, you find this curve actually bends. And also, it doesn't end at a minus one on the wall. It actually has a, has a gap. And that gap is the slip velocity. Because the, the fluid velocity is not, it, there is a jump to the wall velocity. And uh, as the Nuss number goes to infinity, actually you can uh, find an analytical solution asymptotes to a, uh, a given slip velocity. Similar analytical, solution can be found for channel flow. And uh, this is at a small news number, which is very close to a parabolic form. And as you increase news number, you find that there's appearance of slip velocity and also deformation of this par from parabolic. And uh, later on, it, it, it become like a flat in the middle and uh, there's a huge jump in the the, why there's a, a big jump in, also in the, in the, in the 
collect flow because there's uh, some artifacts because the solution is assuming a constant mean free pass. Usually the wall has an equilibrium uh, mechanism. So the, the actually mean free pass is, is never constant when, it, when you look at a uh, distance from the wall getting closer. So near the wall, the actually mean free pass should be smaller. So instead of a slip velocity, you should see a sharp rise of velocity and then become more of a flat. And similarly, it's like this. That reminds us a lot about a fully turbulent channel flow profile. It's a flat in the middle, but then there's a sharp rise near the boundary. So that's so much about the the review of the basic kinetic theory. Now let's look at the, what do we think about turbulence model with this uh, picture. That we can assume that now we select the, the number of uh, fluid elements that have a specific velocity value. But this velocity value is a is a real fluid velocity value. And uh, now we can introduce a distribution function that measures how many, how, what is the fraction of fluid with this particular value located in the neighborhood of this location at a time t. And this black arrow represents an time, I mean, uh, averaged, you know, uh, like a large scale averaged velocity as we know as the, uh, like, a, like average velocity. So because, say, we, if we are dealing with incompressible flow, then when you integrate over all possible velocity value, obviously, the total amount of uh, particles should uh, be one. And uh, now if you take the, the average of this velocity, you get this big velocity as the like Reynolds average velocity. And also you can measure the velocity uh, difference between the, the velocity and the average squared. That gives you the, the RMS velocity. And uh, with this process, you actually, you can write down the, the, the uh, effective kinetic equation. And uh, because the choice of the F, the, the vection term is exactly expressed. And we can also introduce a forcing term. Why we need this force term, like a, like a non-local interaction? Because we want to make sure that the, the, the fluid flow will recover the desired pressure. And for incompressible uh, flow situation, we can determine this body force related to the pressure gradient through this uh, very known, very well known relation. And that's so. These two terms are not mysterious. Now, the this form, this force also will constrain the fluid flow. Is always flow in the in the incompressible manifold. Let me show it again. This is the, the kinetic equation des describing the large scale motion of the fluid. All right, now what is the collision process now? Now the collision process uh, is, can be studied if we want in the future to really find out what it exactly. But now, for, the, for the, our uh, main current purpose is we can assume a BGK model. BGK model means is the collision is, is, a, is a described as a, the, the true distribution function to uh, deviation from equilibrium with a, a, a characteristic uh, relaxation time. And so, so all in here is is the how to determine this relaxation time. 
and uh, as well as what is the right equilibrium distribution function for turbulent flow, large-scale turbulent flow. But uh, then we also know there is a, a well-known observation that for homogeneous turbulence, the one-point PDF of homogeneous turbulence is Gaussian. So it's a, it's a, you, you can find in many lecture notes. So the, the distribution function is e to the u squared over the RMS velocity squared. All right? And uh, if we translate that into a, uh, in Galilean, Galilean transformation to a, a reference frame of a mean flow, then this immediately turn into this form, and this is just a normalization factor. All right, and this form is actually strikingly similar to the Boltzmann distribution functional function form. And, but there are some very important difference. First of all, this, what's inside the exponential function, this u r m s squared, is not the usual thermal temperature, all right? And in, in practice, this URMS square is the, the, the fluctuation uh, of the turbulent flow. Usually, it is smaller than the mean flow squared. And of course, the mean flow squared in, in our low Mach number simulation uh, is much, much less than the, the thermal temperature. So if you look at this relationship, the mean flow, if this is the effective turbulent temperature, that corresponds to this flow is like a, like a, like a, like a particles, but at a very, very low sound speed or very, very low temperature. However, because we have a force that constrains it to an incompressible flow manifold, but it still have a very low temperature behavior, or low sound speed behavior. Now look at it uh, further. This collision operator, if we think of this collision time, which is, once again, to be further studied, there are some relevant time scales associated with this large scale turbulent time. One is uh, kinetic energy over epsilon, the inverse of rate strain, inverse of vorticity, and so on, and uh, their combinations. And uh, the, the turbulent kinetic energy is nothing but the URMS squared average. And then if you plug these quantities into the estimation for the effective turbulent mean free pass, indeed, you will find it is an order unity. And so the so what the, the, the kinetic process tells us is that the kinetic formulation represents any interaction as a relaxation to local Gaussian. And the average turbulent flow is a flow of a large Nusen number. Oh, sorry. And uh, how many minutes? Sorry. Um, so we can do some further about the constraints of the collision operator. But when, so once you have that, if you have the only thing that you need to determine is the collision time. When you have the de collision time is determined, everything is solved. And uh, as a consequence, even though this does not need to be explicitly solved, is you will have a resulting uh, mean flow equation and the turbulent kinetic equation, uh, equation for turbulent kinetic energy, but they are not the same as our typical known, uh, you know, the Reynolds closer, closure model, but with these many, many finite Nusen uh, order terms. And uh, one, one interesting thing is, I want to, if we just assume that Relaxation time has this uh, is related to k over epsilon. Then, the in the long wavelength limit, the indeed the the turbulent uh, runoff stress 
is related to the mean rate of strain. And with the added viscosity defining exactly in this way the K-epsilon model. But, uh, but uh, furthermore, if you look at uh, the next order, it actually also de fully determine the form with this fully determined coefficient. The theta is actually just the K, the turbulent kinetic energy with a constant of uh, like a, uh, three over two or something. And uh, you can sh show that it actually will predict this secondary flow where the standard one doesn't. And you can compare to some well-known uh, closure models that in include the, the second order corrections. And you can compare the coefficients. And these, these are naturally obtained. But with the symmetry, you have a zero for one particular uh, stream-wise or span-wise directions. Another interesting thing is, and this is the rapid distortion, that if you uh, have a homogeneous flow, but suddenly have a shear imposed, and the experimental show is actually it's a continued decay before it arises. And the, the standard capsule model is given by this purple line, and the, the blue dots is the RNG-based capsule model. And if you use the equivalent kinetic uh, expression, then you find, because I said the memory effect, it, the, the, the red line is the, is the model based on standard capsule, and the blue line is the RNG one. So I have this summary. So the um, conventional turbulence closure is based on eddy viscosity, and the effective turbulent Knudsen number is order unity. And the high order correction in turbulence model closure have some issues, and they is more desirable from a kinetic theoretical representation. And uh, once the Navier-Stokes is adequate for regular fluid flow, but its average appear like a micro nano flow, and that's basically my takeaway point. Thank you.